turn on camera one light. Sure, turning on the camera. Turn on camera one siren. Show camera one. Okay, it's appeared. Hi there, today we're unboxing an outdoor Wi-Fi camera. So this particular one is by a company called IMOU. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. A couple of things to highlight about this particular camera, which is quite interesting. It's got a built-in siren and LED floodlight on the front. Also has two-way audio, night vision, and supports a resolution of 1080p, together with PR motion detection as well on this device. So let's take a quick look around the packaging. So it comes nicely packaged in glossy packaging. Picture of the actual device here. If I turn it around, you've got some details regarding the actual app so you can remotely view. You've got push notification available as well and video playback. You can scan in the QR code here to install the app. Another picture of the device highlighting some of the areas on the actual camera. If I come around here highlighting some of the options on there. So 1080p full HD video, two-way talk, IP65, micro SD cards up to 128 gig are supported. It's got an active deterrent of the spotlight and siren. Video encryption is H.265 codec. Uh, PIR detection on there, you've got a cloud service available as well, and Wi-Fi connectivity. Just to note, Wi-Fi connectivity is 2.4 gigahertz only. It doesn't support five gigahertz. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing this. And that's it. Okay, so let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packages. So let me quickly go through them one by one. So initially you've got a quick start guide. So if I open that up, shows you the packing list and product introduction and details on how to put the micro SD card in and app installation. So all in English, very straightforward. Next, you've got regulatory information, some details there on both sides. And then you've got a template for installing the actual camera. So you'd stick that onto a wall, for example, drill your four holes, and then you can attach the mounting plate just there. Okay, next you've got a power brick. So just to show, USB connector on one end and the actual output, if I can show that, is five volts, two amps. Okay, next you've got some clips for attaching the cable. So there's a lot of cable on the actual camera. I've measured it and you've got 2.7 meters on there. So ample amount. So if you're installing this outside, which you would be, just some cable clips just to tidy it away. So obviously you put that into position, mark the positioning, drill into it, and then use the raw plug and screw to attach it onto a wall. Flexible as well. So you can easily put the cable in and good build quality on that. So you get nine of these, okay? Lots of fixtures, so screws and raw plugs. So a good few bags of those, obviously, to accommodate that and the actual mounting plate. Then you've got a pry bar. So this is used just to op open the top of the camera. So you can put the micro SD card into the camera and I'll show how to use that. Okay, so next you've got the actual mounting plate. So very straightforward, strong plastic, and to install, you just unscrew the top all the way. That pops off, and that reveals the four hole locations. And once you've used your template, you can just put this into position and screw in. And then you just put this back into position, tighten up sufficient that you can position as you want. And then once it's in the correct position you wanted, tighten it up, and then it won't move. Okay, good build quality on that as well. And finally, the actual camera. So very compact design to the actual camera. Got a plastic film on there. Let me see if I can take off just to reveal it. And there's another one on the PIR motion detector there, just to show. Okay, so you've got a glossy finish here. You've got the lens, the PIR, and the actual LED here. So that's the floodlight that will go off 
if you wanted to. Branding there, design itself is very compact. If I get my ruler, just to give you an idea. So in terms of this way, we've got about seven centimeters and then we've got seven here as well and depth, the camera alone is approximately five. So very nice and compact. Build quality feels good. So tough, very tough plastic around and a matte white finish. You've got the speaker grill here at the bottom. Hole is for the actual mounting plate there. So if I grab that and just screw it on just to give you an idea. And it's as simple as that. So very good compact design to it. Okay, and just to show the connectors, the actual connector here, build quality is really good. The only thing to note, if you're gonna push this through a hole, you're gonna have to drill a hole this big. So, I don't know, it's a bit of a strange one. It would have been good if it was smaller, so you could just feed that in, really thin hole, and then somehow connect this on, just plug it in to make sure you don't have to do such a large hole. So that's the only odd thing I can say about this. Maybe you could get it going through a window and then just close the window. Sometimes with a double glazed windows, with the rubber seal around, you could probably get that through without damaging it. But yeah, just a note, you're gonna have to drill a hole quite large for it. But good thing is cable quality is good quality and the actual cable length is very long. So 2.7 meters on there. Okay, some details here. So you've got the actual voltage, so five volts, two amps on there. And if I flip it over here, you've got a QR code on that side, okay? And let me show how to use the pry bar. It's a little bit fiddly. I've had a quick go earlier. So you just take the lip here and then just pull it and it just pops open like so. So you've got a reset button here and the location for the micro SD card. So I've got a micro SD card here. It doesn't come with one, unfortunately, so you'll have to get your own one. And let's just have a go. Goes in that way and like so. Pull it out, push it back in and it pops out. So very straightforward, we'll leave that in position Okay, so let's make a start at setting up this Wi-Fi camera. So I've got my Android phone here, Play Store's in the corner. If I click on that, we want to search for IMOU, and that's the app we want to install. So let me click install, and let's give it a moment to install on the device. Okay, so now the app's installed, let's click open and it needs access to the storage on the device, so let's click allow, and also needs access to the device's location, so we allow that as well. Okay, so next I need to register my account, so let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've registered my account, so let's log in. Okay, so that's what we initially presented with, so the next thing we wanna do is click the plus icon here, Say, allow IMOU to take pictures and record video. Okay, so before we do that, let's plug in the camera. So I'll take the power brick and the connector, I'll plug that in, and I've got a power strip at the side, so I'm gonna plug it straight into that. And let's give it a moment to initialize. While that's going on, we'll now click allow. And we need to click it, uh, scan in the QR code for the device. So that's on the label. Okay, so the QR code scanned in now, and let's click next. Okay, so now I need to enter in my Wi-Fi password, so let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've entered in my Wi-Fi password, let me click next. Okay, please confirm that the device's green light is flashing slowly. So if I bring the device around here, there you go, it's flashing slowly. So I'll tick that and we'll click next. It says turn up the volume. So volume's on max. Okay, so now it's saying to enhance security, please set your device password. So let me in, enter in a password off camera. Okay, so I've entered in a password, let me click next. And it's saying connecting to the cloud, please wait. So let's give it a moment. 
Okay, so it's added successfully. Now it's saying, please name your device here. So we'll just say camera and click complete. Okay, so the device is now added in. Let me click the play icon here. Let's give it a moment to connect. Some details here and there you go, it's connected. If I lift it up just to give you some quick motion on there, just to give you an idea of the lag, so I'll drop it down. And you can notice the small lag on there. So it's not too bad. And there's a motion notification coming through on the camera. So let me show you that as well. So if I click on there, click play, give it a moment and you should see the camera moving. So let's give it a second. And as you can tell, it's doing a pre-record as well. Again, then we'll see the drop hopefully in a second. There you go. So notifications are working. So if there's any motion detected by default, it's on. So let's go back from there. And let me now click here. So that allows you to share device with another person who has an IMOU account. If I click here, goes to device details. So if I click there, you've got the cover image setting. Okay, auto snapshot, or you can do a custom, pick a picture from your album. Okay, device name, you can change that. Channel, you can input a channel name. Okay, device model is there, serial numbers there, and device password. So you can change the device password here. Going back, f device firmware version. That's the version, it's already the latest version. Okay, notifications, you've got alarm notifications, so that's where you get the push. And down below, device offline. So re receive device offline notification in time after enabled. So that's quite useful, I'll turn that on. So if it does go offline, you'll be notified. Let's go back. Next thing is arm settings. If I click on there, so motion, smart motion detection, so that's already on. Arm schedule setting. So you can say this is the schedule you want it to be on. So you can pick your day and then pick your time period and you can reduce that on. So you can say, if you know you're going to be out of your house between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., you could say just arm it during that period so you don't have to fiddle around turning it on and off. So settings option here, you can go into there and do it, or you can just click anywhere there and do it and then click save. Okay, go back, go back again. Detection sensitivity, it's in medium at the moment, so minimum is one and maximum is six. Detection re region setting, and click on that. And if I turn the phone now, you can see the region that's gonna be detected. I can clear that, and I can select a region as well if I wanted, just to show. So you can, for instance, if it was pointing into your neighbor's garden, you didn't wanna be notified for that. So you can just say, I just want that region, but I don't want the side. So excellent facility to have in there. Okay, let's just go back from there, turn it back, go back on there and cloud storage. So that's unactivated at the moment. So if you do activate it, obviously there's a subscription price to that. Let's go back. Okay, local storage status. Let me click on that. And that's how much free space and used is 0.16 gig. Okay, then you've got local storage setting. So record. Device video will be saved after enabled. Stream setting, it's high definition. You've also got standard definition. Okay, general record storage. Device video will continuously stored after enabled. So everything will be stored and recording schedule. So again, similar to the other one, you just say the period you want it to record and you can set it granularly on each day. So that's good. Okay, going back, going back some more. If I now go down to white light setting, you can see, say, 
alarm linkage white light so if the alarm goes off then the white light comes on but just to note it's only triggered in night vision mode which is fair enough because if you're in the daylight and the LED light goes off there's no point really because you're not going to blatantly notice it and again you've got a minimum and maximum setting on there so minimum is one maximum is four okay going back device audio collection you can turn that off but it's on at the moment okay customize encryption I turn that on please keep your password well after AV encryption is enabled just to note we'll just cancel that for now okay next is device share and this is where you can just add in another IMO account okay so if I now go to network config this is where you could change the Wi-Fi it's connecting to let's go back okay there's more option here okay device indicator so if I flip the camera up there's a green light there and if I click on there green lights gone off so there's no indicator there so if you don't want to have that showing up you can turn it off which is good image camera image flip as well so if you've placed it in a position where the picture looks upside down you can just click that to flip it then you've got time zone so you can change the time zone let's go back okay and delete and that's all there is to the camera very easy to and straightforward to set up now if I go back this is what I'm presented with so we've got a pause option here so we can pause the stream or we can just hit play and get it going again if I click here if you had multiple cameras you can obviously see all of them and pick the another one if you wanted to go to a different one then you've got standard definition and high definition so at the moment it's in standard if I flip it again it goes back to high definition if I turn that on so the speakers on now so it's listening in on the sound around and you can tell by the delay there is a little bit of a lag okay then if I click the side here goes into full screen I'll spin the phone around and similar options at the bottom here as well we've got three dots here and if I click the first one that'll turn the siren on I won't do that yet then we've got the actual LED if I click that turns it on and you can see it turn on it looks quite bright actually turn that off then we've got here we can go back to the multiple cameras if we had more than one or just take it back to a single view clicking here looks like a lock button okay down below you've got the pause for the stream play HD standard definition you've got the speaker volume then you've got take a picture option initiate a record up here see so if I click that kicks off a record okay next we've got enable talking so you can you can talk on the other side so the person let's turn that off okay then you've got playback so you can pick footage to be played back but at the moment there's no real recordings okay so let's go back from there flip the phone back and just show below view history record if I click on that you can see the cloud side of things if you paid for the cloud service if I click on here this is some recordings that were taken earlier when I was playing around with the camera so you can go back and see the past recordings okay going back down below so snapshot button available speak option available and record option available as well I'll turn that off next let's show the siren in action so if I click it click OK very loud and the spotlight okay and then if I come out of there you can actually click at the bottom here where it says message and you can see any camera motion that's been detected on there so that's one of the ones that's been detected okay at the top you've got personal push and then you've got system message if I click on system message these are sort of maintenance messages from the actual company so I am OU so if they're having any maintenance done they'll let you know okay let's go back 
and we'll go back to device and that's it. Simple as that to set up and configure. Now, the next thing to test out, if I drop this down, let's turn off our Wi-Fi. Give it a moment to connect to 4G and there you go, it's connected. Now, if I click play, okay, it's warning it's using the cellular network. And there you go. There is a delay on there, just a note, but simple as that to get up and running. So no need to open any ports on your router, just work straight out of the box. And there you go, a video mo uh, notification because obviously motion was detected. So very simple to set up and configure and works straight out of the box for remote Okay, connectivity. so for the next test, let me show how loud the actual siren is. So my sound level meter's here. Let's go quiet for a moment. It's about 34 decibels at ambient noise level. And let's turn on the siren. Ninety-one decibels on that. So really cool in terms of noise levels. So for such a small device, it's very loud. Okay, so next I'm gonna show how to enable the siren to activate when motion is detected. So very straightforward. If I click in the corner here, you've got device details. And at the bottom, you've got siren setting. And it's this option here, alarm linkage siren. So if I click there, it says siren is very loud. Are you sure to enable linkage? We'll click okay to that. Then you've got siren duration. So if I click on that, you've got three options, 10, 20, or 30 seconds. So let's go for the minimum. So obviously do be careful with this because you've got to get the sensitivity right for your particular situation for this to activate. So you don't want it to go off randomly if there's perhaps a fly going past, for instance, or some um, leaves on a tree moving or a bush or something. So got to be careful. Obviously it is loud and it could disturb other people. Okay, so if I now go back. Okay, so now if I put my hand in front of the camera, There you go. So the sirens sounded for 10 seconds and you've got the push notification come through. So great functionality on this camera. The fact that you can get an alarm going off and a push notification as well. Okay, so next I'm gonna show how to configure this camera with the Google Home. So I've got the Home app here in the corner. If I click on that, and then we click in the corner here, go to settings, followed by assistant, and then home control. Next, we want to click the plus symbol here. And the service we want to search for is IMOU. And it's that one there. So let me click that. Okay, so next we're being prompted for a username and password. So let me type in my details from my IMOU account off camera. Okay, so I've entered in my details. Let me click sign in. Okay, we'll click Authorize Next. Give it a moment to link to my Google Home account. Okay, and you can assign it to a room. And as you can see, there's three different elements to it. So I've renamed it to Camera One. So Camera One, and then camera one light and camera one siren. So if I just click done and understood, and then we just wanna go back now. Okay, so now if I click on the home app and if I scroll down, you can see camera one and camera one light here and if we carry on going camera one siren so let's start with siren only because it's here if i click on i can turn it off if i go back up camera one light if i click that there you go it's turned on turn it off now Next thing we could do 
is say turn on camera one light sure turning on the camera one light turn off camera one light okay turning the camera one light off turn on camera one siren Show camera one. All right, streaming camera one on living room display. There you go. It's displaying now. Let's give it a moment. Okay, it's appeared. So if I lift the camera now, just to show the lag. So it still hasn't appeared. Okay, Google. There you go. Camera one. Very slow. You see that? You can hear me saying it. It's a good few seconds behind stop so functionality wise very impressive because obviously you can control the light and that's quite instant siren is instant as well just the lag on the camera but that's general amongst all these cameras that integrate with the Google Home from what I've tested so far so there you go some cool functionality available and integrates really easily with the Google Home okay so I'm outside in the dark and the spotlights on and I just wanted to show the brightness level you get so this is in my garden area and that's the brightness of the LED light. It's a very bright, I have to admit. And I hold it higher. It does give a good amount of brightness. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this outdoor Wi-Fi camera. Very simple to set up and configure in terms of functionality. Actually has an LED floodlight at the front together with a built-in siren. So very different from the average camera out there. Picture quality is great at 1080p. Only negative point is only works with their app. So it doesn't work with apps like Smart Life, for instance. So I would have preferred if it worked with that as well. But even with that in consideration, great bit of kit here. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like and subscribe.